Praise the Lord. Amen. You are most welcome tonight to, uh, for another session. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank God that you're here safely. Praise the Lord. Uh, it's not by mistake that you're in the house of God tonight. Uh, it, it is our prayer that God will increase and enlarge our capacity to receive from God. Hallelujah. Not only through these sessions, but also through the preaching and the teaching of the Word of God that you avail yourself to. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you have your Bible with you, can you come to Romans chapter 15? Romans chapter 15, please. And verse 4 is where I want to get to. Verse 4. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. Verse 4. Amen. Verse 4 reads, For whatever things were written before were written for our learning. Pay very careful attention here. Can we read it again? For whatever things were written before, they were written for our learning. Amen. Hallelujah. That we through what? Through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So it is our prayer that whatever you, you learn from the word of God through his Holy Spirit tonight, this will anchor your soul, anchor your hope. Hallelujah. To stay on the course eh, with God. No matter how hard life is. No matter whatever situation or circumstance you may come across in, your, eh, in our journey with God. That you will hang on eh, to Jesus for dear life. You will never let go eh, of your Lord and Savior. Can the people say amen? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. We are touching on the uh, uh, basic Christian foundational studies. How many of you have been blessed so far? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, do we have any questions before we begin? Was there anything in these last two sessions that just wasn't quite clear that you just wanted, perhaps, you, Pastor, you can elaborate or expand a little bit on it? Who's got any question tonight uh, that that you want to ask so we can we can make perhaps answer your question or if it's going to be answered later on in this teaching um, uh, we we can let you know that so who's got a question everybody okay nobody's got a question praise the lord all right hallelujah so everybody's familiar that uh, we have two kingdoms of Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay. Hallelujah. Let me see what I got this thing. <coughs> Can everybody read that? Can we read it? Two, three. Hell was not created for mankind. Hell was not created for mankind. Who was hell created for? Satan and his angels. Can we read the scripture, please? Two, three. You notice it's an everlasting fire. Everlasting fire. Amen. So understand something. There's no relief in heaven. There's no respite. You know, uh, you know when, when people are suddenly say, whoa, whoa, whoa. Can we have a you know, time, time break? Let's just have a break. Ten minutes break. 
then we continue with you know with the suffering, with the torment. No, you don't get a break in heaven, uh, in hell. It's an everlasting fire. Praise the Lord. You suffer and continue to suffer the moment somebody gets in there. They don't get a break. There's a, there's a scripture in Isaiah. I'm not quite sure where the reference is. It says, there's no rest for the wicked. Yeah? Praise the Lord. There's no rest for the wicked. Everlasting fire. Prepare for the devil, which is Satan, and his angels. And you notice the same punishment. The same punishment that goes to Satan and his angels also go to mankind who end up in hell. Then to tell you what I know, it's only by Satan and by the angels who are going to be cast to hell. It's only by the angels who are going to be cast to hell. And Allah will not be able to do. Same treatment, same punishment. There's no difference. You get the same punishment eh, of your spiritual father. If you're a member of that kingdom. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah? You get the same treatment. Yeah? What do they say? One size fits all. So it's one punishment fits all. Praise the Lord. Amen. Can we read it? Ah, can we read it? Of course. Oh, of course. The same judgment that is placed upon Satan on judgment day will also be put upon all members of his kingdom. Amen? Same judgment. No, dif no, no. God doesn't, God doesn't differentiate, eh? Oh, this one, yeah, naughty angel, eh? The dark, eh? Satan's angel. This one, naughty one. Oh, this one may, you know, a little bit better on earth. Maybe not so much punishment. No, they all get the same treatment. Eh? Toto what the kingdom Praise the Lord. What is the qualification of going to hell? What is the qualification? If I, if I were to say to you tonight, uh, do you qualify to go to hell right now? How many here you qualify to go to hell right now? If you were to die tonight, where would you end up? Hell or heaven? Heaven. Okay, how many here are you going to heaven? Put your hand up. Okay, the rest of you, okay, what's your qualification for going to hell? What's your qualification for going to hell? Forget about those. Those people, they know they're going to heaven. But for the rest of you who didn't put your hand up, so what's your qualification? What are you thinking? I, I, how many of you just not sure, Sarga? They go, oh, man, I don't know, Sarga. I mean, maybe I got one foot in heaven, one foot in hell. How many of you not sure? Put your hand up. Okay, praise the Lord. Good? So we hope uh, tonight uh, we will answer the question, eh? Praise the Lord. Amen. You have to be born into this world to qualify to go to heaven. Ah, hell, sorry. You have to be born into this world. <laughs> Your destiny is hell. Why is that? Because of that. Can we read? Two, three. Eh? From the moment you were conceived, not even born, just the moment you were conceived, your destiny was hell. Eh? Just the moment you were conceived. Eh? Your destiny was hell. Praise the Lord. I think, I think somebody asked the other night what happened to the babies and all the stillborn miscarriage babies and all of that. Well, we've answered that question that they all go to heaven. Why is that? Because of God's mercy. Because of God's mercy. Even though physically they haven't committed any sin, but because of God's mercy, God takes them to heaven. Praise the Lord. We, we dealt with the... the the, the, the age of responsibility. <coughs> Remember that? With the Jewish people, it's about the age of 12. That's when a person becomes a man. 
<coughs> or a grown up if we, if we can put in our terminology. Praise the Lord. So age 12, when that, that's when they do the bar beats, find all that. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Uh, praise the Lord. That's the age of responsibility when the child knows between right and wrong, sin and... Okay? So, but, but remember we discussed the other night, yeah? When the child can speak and understand and say a prayer, man, lead this child to the Lord straight away. Don't wait until 12. Praise the Lord. Amen. Eh? Hallelujah. Lead this child to say the salvation prayer. Praise the Lord. Amen. Do it now. As soon as possible. Amen. 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 And you notice we all qualify to go to hell, eh? Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I was I was 30 years old when I received the Lord Jesus Christ to be my personal Savior and Lord. So imagine from, eh, from the moment I got born and the moment I was 30 years old, eh, because of God's mercy, He kept me alive during those 30 years. I, I should have been dead several times within those 30 years. But God kept me alive for 30 years, praise the Lord, so that I can become I can be born into God's family. Amen? You look at your life and see how old were you when you got born again? And look back and see, man, several times they are, I, I shouldn't be here right now. But because of God's mercy, He kept you alive so that you could be saved and become a member of His kingdom. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord gives us more reason to appreciate and thank God for our salvation. Huh? Can you say thank you to Jesus right now? Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, thank you for saving me. Amen. Hallelujah. Some of us, we did naughty stuff. But baka baka naughty. The picture was nice, eh? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Eh? Well, I will, I'll put it up again. Any any question? Anybody wants to? Anybody got a question? Hallelujah. Uh, okay, okay. Since you're not uh, asking any question, I'll ask the question then. Uh, can you earn your salvation? Can you earn it? Huh? Can you work for it? Can you earn it? Can you you know? Uh, let, let's let's say me being a pastor. I just use myself as an example. Easy. Uh, let's say me, I'm preaching the I'm preaching the gospel. I'm doing this. I'm doing that for the church and for for the Lord. And can that work qualify me eh, to receive eternal life? No. no. Yes or no? No. no. Uh, all the no say. Hey, put your hands up. Okay. Those who didn't put your hands up, which means you say yes. Eh? So we'll just give it to you. Yes. Okay, why do you say that you can work for your salvation? What's the reason? Okay, praise the Lord. How many saviors do we have? How many saviors? So there's only one savior. So then why did you say that you can work for your salvation? So who's that one? Your work or the Lord Jesus Christ? Lord Jesus. Then why did you say you can work for it? <laughs> yeah? If you can, if you can earn your salvation, which means, yeah, which means you have now become a savior. You work for it, and God says, "Okay, okay, thank you very much." There, yeah? eternal life. You can have it now. So in other words, eternal life now has become a reward instead of given by grace. Ephesians chapter 2, if you have it. Ephesians chapter 2. I'm just going through what we did the other day. All right. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So you see in the picture there, that sinful man, and you got a holy God there, 
and he is the giver of eternal life. Praise the Lord. So you, can ha you, you cannot receive eternal life by good works, by doing religious work, or by just being a good person. Just being a good person doesn't qualify you to receive eternal life. Why is that? Why is that? If you were, if you were just a good person, eh? You never went to Namboro prison, you never steal anything, you never swear, you never been drunk, you never did any of the naughty stuff, just a good person. How come you, can't, you cannot make it? How come you cannot receive eternal life? Why is that? Because Jesus is not in our life. Jesus is not in our life. Very simple is the thing. Praise the Lord. Amen. The other part of it is that you still have that sin nature. Remember that sin nature? You remember the pig? Yes. Oh, somebody remember the pig. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Eh? Because you still have that sin nature. No amount of work that you do for God will change the sin nature. Understand? Mm. Eh? No amount of work. You can do this, you can do that, you can do that. But if you still have that sin nature, that sin nature will take you to hell. Amen, Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Eh? Praise the Lord. Amen. Remember the illustration that I did the other night? Was it last night? Hey, imagine this is the kingdom of darkness here, that's the kingdom of light. I come confess my sins to God. And God forgives me. Do I not qualify to enter into the kingdom of light? My sins have been forgiven. Can I now enter into the kingdom of light? Yes or no? No. Why is that? Because I still have the sin nature. And the sin nature is still there. Do you see now? Eh? Who changes the sin nature now? Well, what's left? What's left for me to do? To receive eternal life? That's the answer. You have to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord. When He comes in, that nature changes. We, see that we saw the scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, that uh, if any man be in Christ, all things have passed away, Behold, all things have become new. new. You see, you have to be in Christ. Just having your sins forgiven doesn't qualify you to receive eternal life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So don't tell anybody that uh, um, uh, your sins are forgiven, you now receive eternal life. Not yet. Until the moment they receive Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and Lord, that's the moment they receive eternal life. Amen? So when you're doing the salvation prayer with people, because the salvation prayer it has three components. No, no. I'm doing like this, like a picture. Three components. Okay, the first component of the salvation prayer is that there must be an admittance or acknowledgement that we are a sinner. Amen? Amen. Yeah? When somebody comes to Christ, when somebody comes for salvation, which means that we are now admitting and acknowledging that we are a sinner and we needed to be saved from that sin. Amen? The second part is we have to confess it. Eh? We have to confess it. And the third part is that we have to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior and Lord. Okay? The three components of the salvation prayer. Praise the Lord. Amen. There must be an admittance or acknowledgement of sin. Admittance or acknowledgement of sin. That we are a sinner. Praise the Lord. The second part is confession and repentance. Then we must confess and repent of our sins. The third part is that we must receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior and Lord. The three components of the salvation prayer. Any question? Do that. 
Sama tata juga ya. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Good works. Amen. Yeah. Uh, what, what scripture did we go to? Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9. Can somebody read it for us in the English translation? For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of God, lest anyone should boast. Eh? So that's why we cannot earn our salvation. If we earn our salvation, then salvation is no longer a free gift. Eh? If, you, if we have to work for our salvation, then it is no longer a free gift. It is now a reward or payment for something that we did. Amen? So you did this, 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 and God eh, rewards you or pays you eh, eternal life because of something that you did. And guess what? You will start to boast about it. Eh? You will say, oh man, well, now we did this and we did that and we did this and God did that and we did this and we, God did that. And, and what happens is this, and you, you begin to use God as a formula. Huh? Begin to use God as a formula. This plus this equals God. And it doesn't work like that. God is much bigger than the box we try to contain him in it. Praise the Lord. God is not a formula. God is not a formula. Praise the Lord. Amen. So you see here because we have all have seen that come short of the glory of God. Eh? Every one of us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, oh, thank you, Jesus. So what's God's rescue package for mankind? What do you think? What's the rescue package? What did God do to rescue us from our sins? Amen. That's the rescue package. He sent his son to die for us. Calvary, eh? on Mount Calvary, on the cross. Without Calvary, none of us would be here right now. Every one of us would be going to hell. Praise the Lord. Amen. Eh? Do you see the bridge? The cross is the bridge. Eh? Amen. Amen. Christ paid the penalty. Sa soma wati nandi now. He paid the debt we. What's that? What's that course? He paid the debt that we. He did not. Oh. And we owe a debt that we could not pay. Christ Jesus. And you know the song. Praise the Lord. Eh? So, salvation is not by works. Eh? Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9. Because otherwise we'll boast. Oh, kita usarango, fasting. Yeah, man, we, oh, kita usarango, we used to camp in the church. And so we, we, we begin to boast about the activity that we do for God. And guess what? God is not impressed one single bit. Why is that? Why is God not impressed one single bit when we when we start talking about it and comparing about it? You know, and it's a oh man, you know, we pray and fasted and God moved. And we prayed fast and God asked them. We pray fasted. So what are you doing? You are you are giving the activity all the glory eh, instead of going to God. Because you're saying we did this and we did that, and then God moved. So now we are elevating ourselves and the activity that we're involved in, praise the Lord, eh, as the reason why God moved. And God is not like that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We are crediting. We are giving the glory to the activity that we were involved in and that's the reason why God moved because we did that. And that's very wrong. 
Praise the Lord. Yeah. Actually, that is that is witchcraft in the sight of God. Eh? Praise the Lord. We, we're, now, we're now saying that because of what we did, God has no choice but to answer the prayer. And that's not true. God doesn't have, God is not obligated to do anything on our behalf. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. So be careful. Eh? God is not a formula. Don't, we are his servant. He's not our servant. Some people are thinking if we pray and fast, God will answer the prayer. No, he doesn't have to. Amen? He doesn't have to. Praise the Lord. Amen. Eh? We can't force God. You know, we can't twist God's arm behind his back to the point he said, and the guy said, okay, 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 I'll answer the prayer. I'll answer the prayer. No. Praise the Lord. Amen. We are his servant. God is not our servant. We can't force God to answer the prayer just because we're praying and fasting. Amen? Let me put it this way. Fasting is not designed to move God. Fasting is designed to move us. Amen? Amen. Fasting is not designed to move God. God has already moved. He's already made everything available for us. Fasting is designed to move us. To shift our faith from where we are to another, to another level, to another zone. Praise the Lord. Fasting doesn't move God. God is not moved by fasting. What moves God? What moves the hand of God? Prayer. Prayer, you're close. Another one? Faith. Faith moves God. Amen? Faith moves God. Not fasting. Amen. Any question? Is it good to give testimony in the church? Yes. The testimony is designed so that your faith will be encouraged so that you can believe God just like the person giving a testimony. Eh? Praise the Lord. Yeah. That's, that's what testimony is designed. It's designed to encourage us. Yeah? Because the person is testifying, he's saying that the word of God works. I applied the word of God that I heard in church or I read in the Bible. I applied the principles of God and they worked for me. That's what they're supposed to do. The testimony is supposed to motivate us, encourage us to apply the principles of God. Can we read the scriptures 2-3? For God so the Lord that he gave his only Do you see that? People don't go to hell because they're a drunk or an adulterer or go to the nightclub and all that. They don't go to hell for that. What's the reason why people go to hell? What's the reason why people go to hell? Rejection of the Lord Jesus Christ is the reason why people go to hell. Amen? When they reject the Lord Jesus Christ to be their personal Savior and Lord, that's the reason why they go to hell. Not because they're a drunk, not because you know, they're a womanizer, not because you know, they touch touch somebody, no. The reason why they go to hell is because they refuse <coughs> or reject to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you notice in the scripture it says they already condemned. While they're still living here, they're under the curse already. They don't need to go to hell to be under the curse. They're already under the curse in this life. Amen. Amen. Can we read this translation? Two, three. <laughs> So that everyone who is in him will not perish, but have eternal life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn you, but to save you. There is no judgment awaiting those who trust him. 
You see, there is no judgment awaiting those who trust Him. Amen? Because one day all of us will stand before God. But to those who put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ to be their personal Savior and Lord, God will tell them not guilty. Actually, Jesus will be their defending counsel or defending lawyer. But for the wicked, they don't have a defending lawyer. Because Satan is the prosecutor, eh? and he is the accuser of the brethren. When a wicked person, eh? but when a person who rejects Jesus Christ to be his or her personal savior stands before God, he is judged guilty already. Guilty already. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. John 3, 36. Can you look up John 3, 36 in your Bible, please? Hallelujah. John 3, 36. Auntie Surila, can you please read it to us in the... Hindi Bible place. Amen. Eh? Praise the Lord. In English, please, two, three. But the wrath of God abides on him. Eh? He who believes the Son, he who believes Jesus Christ has what? Everlasting life. Guaranteed, eh? Guaranteed. And he who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. Now, Praise the Lord. Eh? Hallelujah. What's the solution for every one of us? What's the solution? Praise the Lord. Eh, do we have a solution for this thing? Yes. Yeah. This is God. Repent and confess your sins and receive God. Receive Jesus Christ eh? as our personal Savior. And this is the rescue package for all mankind. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's the rescue package. God has already designed a rescue package and it's already available for everyone who will come to Him by faith. Praise the Lord. Amen. Eh? Amen. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth, mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead you shall be or you will be saved for with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation, salvation. Amen? Amen praise the Lord any questions so far so for the people who are not sure are you starting to see something tonight? Because some people said if they die tonight, they will go to heaven. Eh? So for the people you said you were going to hell, maybe we can fix it up. Eh? Maybe tonight we'll give, you an, we'll give you an opportunity to repent and confess your sins. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is... Take a break for one moment here. Can we all stand? All stand. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right, for everybody.
Can we all read the salvation prayer? One, two, three. Dear God in heaven, I realize and admit that I am a sinner. I repent of my sins and ask you to forgive me. I renounce Satan and all his works from my life. I confess Jesus now as my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, baptize me now with your Holy Spirit and fire. In Jesus' name I pray. Okay, just thank God right now that you are saved. I don't want to come on out of Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For every person that have said that prayer from the bottom of their heart, Lord God, and thank you that you mean business with them and they mean business with you. Thank you that they are your child right now. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. And all the church say, Amen. Amen and Amen. Okay, you may be seated. So now, okay, for some unforeseen circumstances, should you go home to be with God tonight, please know for sure that you are now saved because you just said the salvation prayer. Amen. Amen. Eh? Hallelujah. So, so, so next week if I ask you, how many of you know you're going to heaven? You should be the first people to lift your hands up. Eh? <laughs> just saying that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. What does God or what God does with our sins? Eh? This is just what happens when a person receives the Lord Jesus Christ and what God does with that person's life. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Number one, number one is that He lays them on His Son, Jesus Christ. That's what God does. Eh? When a person receives the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and Lord, eh, God the Father, Parmeshua, He lays that person's sin, all their sin, on the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. The scripture to that is in Isaiah 53, verse 6. Eh? Isaiah 53, verse 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. That's Isaiah 53, 6. Eh? Number two. Christ takes away all our sins. Amen. Number two is Christ takes away all our sins. Praise the Lord. Amen. The scripture is John chapter 1 verse 29. The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Eh? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay. Notice this is not available to the person who rejects the Lord Jesus Christ. Eh? This is not available to them. Praise the Lord. Number three. They are removed an immeasurable distance as far as the east is from the yes. west. Psalm 103 verse 12. As far as the east is from the west. Okay, continue reading it. So far has removed that transgression. Notice if he said eh, from the north to the south, they connect. Because we know where the north is. And we know where the South Pole is. But when he said uh, from the east to the west, remember this planet is round. So they don't connect. It's round. We don't even know, we don't even know where east and west is. Because it's round. So as far as the east is from the west, he's thrown it away. So far that Satan cannot go and dig it up. Praise the Lord. Amen. Number four. 
when sought for they are not found that's the best news well all of it is all the best news but this one here when somebody goes looking for it especially Satan eh, to remind us of what we used to do in the past it cannot be found he doesn't have any record of it to use against us later on to accuse us you did this you did this because I have the evidence no more evidence God took the evidence away from Satan Jeremiah 50 20 and we read 2 3 you see that's good news for us isn't it that's very good news yeah. hallelujah if somebody comes to remind oh you stood there that's the old person that one died this is the new person you're looking at number five the Lord forgives them Ephesians 1 7 and we all read 2 3 Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. In Him, in Jesus, because you are in Christ, uh, we have the redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of our sins according to His riches of His grace. Amen. Because of His grace, that's why we are saved. Not something that we did. Praise the Lord. Amen. Not something that we did. Eh? Salvation cannot be earned. Amen. Those who do not believe that all our sins was nailed to the cross, they never get saved. Eh? Those who believe, eh? those who believe eh? Eh? that only certain sins were nailed to the cross and other sins weren't, they never get saved. <coughs> because somebody has to die for that sin. Let me just ask the question. How can sin be removed? You notice that sin cannot be removed any other method. Because for the wages of sin is? Yes. Yeah. So somebody, so whatever sin is, uh, it hasn't been, has been nailed on the cross, somebody's going to die for that sin. Let me, let me, let me just add something here. This might shock you. This might shock you. Since I said that, eh? this might shock you. Uh, if somebody, if somebody kept all the laws of God, if somebody was able, eh? nobody can keep all the laws. Eh? Jesus made that very clear. If any person in the whole world can keep all the laws of God, huh? can they can they can they receive eternal life? Okay, okay, the Senna is right. The Senna is right. Why is that? We ask for the Senna's. Why is that? Because the law was not designed for salvation. The law was designed for conviction of sin. There's only one Savior, Jesus Christ, not the law. The law cannot save anybody. Or the law, or only the, the, what, what the law does, it is designed to tell you that you're a sinner and you needed to be saved. But the law cannot save anybody. It has no ability to save anybody. Eh? Only Jesus Christ is the Savior. Everybody who wants to be saved from their sins have to come to the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. They cannot rely on the Old Testament sacrifices and laws. Do you understand now? All this sacrificial system that God introduced in the Old Testament they were all designed to point towards the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Praise the Lord. 
Those people in the Old Testament who believed that and acted on that by faith, they got saved on credit. We got saved. Eh? They got saved in advance. Waiting for the cross. They look forward to the cross. We look back at the cross. <coughs> if anybody was able to keep all the laws, praise the Lord, huh? their sins are forgiven, but they still go to hell. hell. And why is that? Because of the sin nature. Remember that? They still have the sin nature. Praise the Lord. Amen. That sin nature will take you to hell. Amen. Kema kama tamo talay rao rao. Kena lawa todo o itsiko na ibola tando. No mate mo sa ilang mga yel. Sinrao tamo ibola tando. Nambola tamo ibola tando. Sulit ang duwa nga na mone turo na matisu karisto. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number six. He cleanses them all away by the blood of his son. Eh? That's what God did for our sins. He cleanses them all away by the blood of his son. Praise the Lord. Amen. Can we read the scripture? 1 John 1, 7, 2, 3. But if you walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And, and the blood, blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Number seven. He cleanses them as white as snow or wool. Eh? Mm. Eh? You like snow white. Tell to somebody, hello, snow white. Hello, snow white. Praise the Lord. Amen. Huh? Hallelujah. And the and the scripture is Isaiah. Chapter 1, verse 18, can we read it together? 2, 3. Come now and let us reason together. Say to the Lord, the Lord is our Lord. The face shall be as white as snow. We'll be our red like the reason. The face shall be as snow. The next one, Psalms 51, 7, please read it. 2, 3. And I shall be washed. See? Hallelujah. You don't need to have a bath to be snow white. You snow white through the blood of Jesus. But please take a bath before you come to church. Eh? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Number eight. He abundantly pardons them. Praise the Lord. I'm trying to show you that your salvation is complete. You don't have to add anything to your salvation. Jesus paid all the price. The scripture is Isaiah 55 verse 7. Can we all read it together? 2, 3. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man in his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For he will abundantly pardon. Number 9. He tramples them under... Food. That's what he does with the sea, without sin. Micah 7 19, 2 3. He will again have compassion upon us. He will share all iniquities under food. Though we will cast all our sins into the depth of the sea. Amen. Number 10. Look at this. God remembers our sins no more. Eh? God remembers our sins no more. Hebrews 10, 17. Can we read 2, 3? Then it ends. sins and their I will remember no more. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 11 and 12. He cast them behind his back. Isaiah 38, 17. Can we read it together? 2, 3. Indeed, it was 
<laughs> Praise the Lord. Eh? But you have loving, lovingly delivered my soul from the pit of corruption, for you have cast all my sins behind your back. Praise the Lord. Number 12. He cast them into the depths of the sea. Micah 7, 19. He will again have compassion on us. We already read that. Praise the Lord. And will and will subdue our iniquities. You will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number 13. He will not impute us with sins. In other words, God is not going to record any sins against our name. Romans chapter 4 verse 8 says, Blessed is the man to whom the Lord shall not impute sin. Well, praise the Lord. God is not going to credit any sin. Hallelujah. Against your name. So, can I ask the question then? That's the question. What happens after you got saved, or you get saved, and you sin again? What happens? If you... If you die, you go to heaven. No, you don't. You yes, you still go to heaven. But say after you get saved, three weeks later, eh, you committed some sin. Let's say you thought an ugly thought. Ungodly thought. Praise the Lord. So what happens? What do you do with that sin? You just confess it to the Lord. Eh? 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. If we confess our sins, He is what? Faithful and just to forgive us and what? Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Okay? Number 14, He covers them. Romans 4, 7, 2, 3. Yes. Lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Number 15, he blots them out. Isaiah 43, 25. Can we read it? 2, 3. For my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. And I will not remember your sins. He blots them out as a thick cloud. Eh? He blots them out as a thick cloud. Isaiah 44, 22, 2, 3. I have brought it out like a thick cloud. Your transgressions and I have brought your sins returned to me for I have redeemed you. Number 17, last one. He blots out even the proof against us nailing it to his son's cross. Colossians 2.14 Let's read it together. Having wiped out the which was contrary to us and Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad that the Lord Jesus Christ went to the cross for your sake and my sake. And aren't you glad that you obeyed the conviction of the Holy Spirit and received Jesus Christ to be our personal Savior and Lord. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. You see, what he, you see what happened in the spiritual realm? What God did? You didn't even know about it, did you? I didn't know about it. But here it is in the scriptures. What He did for you and for me. Praise the Lord. So that Amen. Satan cannot one day come before God and accuse us because he's got evidence against us. Jesus took care of that on the cross. There's no evidence of your sin anymore. Your record, when, 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 when we check your folder, they're all blank pages. Blank pages. Pages after pages of blank pages because it has been washed away by the blood of Jesus. Every record of our sins have been taken care of through the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's good news. Amen. 
Amen. That's good news. Amen. So, uh, who's got any question that wanted to ask? My time is up. Who's got any question? Do you have Anything unclear? Anything needs to be clarified? Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father God, we are so indebted to you. We thank you, Father God, that you have taken care of our sins, leaving Satan with no evidence whatsoever to accuse us later on. Thank you, Father God. Lord God, for our salvation. Thank you, Father God. We should have, we should have died without the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Way before we, we came to receive Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. But you kept us alive. Lord God, you, you watched over our lives. You protected us. You carried us. We didn't even realize that. Hallelujah. But we thank you tonight, Father God. We're beginning to learn a few things. Lord God, of what you did for us. We won't completely know it or learn it, Father God. But we thank you, Lord God, for our salvation tonight. Uh, that our destiny, Father God, is sealed in Christ. That, uh, Lord God, should we come by way of the grave, Father God, we thank you. Hallelujah. That your arms are open wide to receive us. Hallelujah. Take us into your kingdom. Receive us into your kingdom, Father God. We thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity to hear your word tonight. Lord God, we pray that you protect us as we leave your house to go to our homes. We praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen and amen and amen. Clap offering.